Hey gang, Scott here. This video is for the Lightroom users that are using On1 as a plugin. Smart Photos is back. This is a feature we had a few years ago. You might remember if you've been a long time On1 plugin user, where you have re-editability. You can take a photo, send it out to an On1 plugin, make edits, bring it back into Lightroom. And later on, you wanna make a tweak, well, you can open up a smart photo again and make the tweak. I'm going to show you how it works. And if you're thinking about adding on one to your toolkit, check the show notes. There is an offer code down there that will save you a bit of money. So let's have a look. The return of smart photo. So I'm here in Lightroom and I've made some basic adjustments to this raw photo. I'm ready to bring it into on one to add some style. This you know, pretty gray overcast day. There's a particular style uh, of uh, preset I have it on one I like to add here. So I want to do this as a smart photo. So I have options if I change my mind later. How we do this? File, plugin extras, and I'll choose on one effect. Here's the new bits, right? So you have your normal stuff. You've seen this all the time when you're doing a Lightroom plugin, but in file format, you now have Smart Photo PSD, and that's the one you want to choose. Now, if you're in on one, you can launch on one as a standalone. You want to change your preferences to use Smart Photo pretty much all the time, right? And so that way, this would be the default filled in for you. But if you don't have it as the default, you can just choose it right there, Smart Photo, and then we'll send that over into Effects. I've landed over in Effects, and a quick detour to that Preferences option. I'm going to show you this here for the plugins. If you change in the Lightroom section, change this to Smart Photo PSD, and then you'll have that as your default every single time that you pop up the uh, window in Lightroom. You won't have to choose it every time. So uh, now that I'm here, I'm in on one. Uh, there is a preset that I want to apply to this. There's one I like for these kinds of days, Old Man in the Sea. We'll apply that. It adds a bunch of looks. You can see, uh, or a bunch of filters to build up this look, a whole bunch of stuff here, right? And let's say, good, I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm going to just hit done and send this back over into Lightroom. So I've landed back here in Lightroom and you see in the file name, this PSD file has a smart photo suffix and that's good. That gives us a visual clue. This is a smart photo. I have the ability to re-edit it if I need to. And let's walk through that. Let's say you're looking at this photo. Uh, maybe the, the foreground feels maybe a slight bit dark. Maybe I want some more contrast on just the rocks in the foreground. So I want to take this back into on one and use, uh, use dynamic contrast. Let's go ahead and do File, Plugin Extras, Effects. A little different this time. The default selected is Open Original, and that's what we want because the plugin recognizes this is a smart photo. Let's reopen that or give you the option, the default option of let's reopen this so that you can work with your previous edits, change them, tweak them, add to them, whatever you might like to do. So I'll hit OK, send this back into Effects. Back in effects again, I have all of the filters that I added previously. And let's see, I want to add some dynamic contrast. So let's go ahead, add a filter, dynamic contrast. Uh, I only want it for the foreground. So let's do, let's do this. Let's do a luminosity mask, invert to it targets just those darker shadow areas. I'll grab a gradient and drop it on the, the upper part of the scene. So no additional contrast above my gradient. There's more added below. Uh, shadows, maybe I'll open the shadows up ever so slightly. You can see I'm, I'm making adjustments there, but you know, maybe, maybe a touch and compensate with deepening those blacks really deep there. So I've made this little change here, right? Before that change, after that change, wonderful. I'll hit done and then I'll send this back over into Lightroom. It's re-registered with my catalog and I have this re-editability courtesy of the smart photo. A couple of other things about this smart photo workflow with Lightroom. You noticed I used the file plugin extras options to launch photos into the on one plugins and not the photo edit in menu. Use file plugin extras. That's where you get the additional options for smart photos. And uh, there's some additional options for batching. I have a separate video I'll do about batching things through on one plugins. Uh, there's also an option for portrait if you're doing portrait work and you will see a little checkbox to say apply the uh, AI 
for all the detected faces. So there's some additional uh, communication that the plugin system is able to do when you use the file plugin extras. You just it's a it's a, a less robust workflow with photo edit in. So uh, I am having to shift my mind a little bit and stop right clicking, get over that file menu because I want these extra options. One other thing I've noticed sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes with the smart photo workflow is when the photo lands back in Lightroom, uh, it will have a badge saying the metadata has changed. I'm not quite sure what's triggering that. Uh, and I have a separate video that talks about what this warning is in Lightroom, but the, the short version is there is what the catalog in Lightroom says, this is my metadata, and then what is on disk somehow doesn't agree. And it's up to you, the photographer, to decide which one of those things is the source of truth. For me, uh, with a Lightroom-centric workflow, I always choose Lightroom as the source and saying a Lightroom overwrite the settings, take what's in the catalog as truth, and push that out to disk. But uh, check out the other video on, on the metadata conflict thing uh, with Lightroom to give you some ideas on how you might manage that. But that's Smart Photos, a really, really cool feature. I'm very happy that it's back in the product, giving us this re-editability for Lightroom plugin users. Got questions? Go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Have fun.